so the trunk that's sitting on a driveway, it's in kind of angle. So if we have, this is our driveway, okay, and this is at a certain angle, and here's our trunk. What direction does the weight is the weight of the trunk? Yeah. Downward, straight down. So here's our weight. <coughs> what direction is the normal force? Straight up. It's perpendicular to the surface now. It's always perpendicular to their surface. But when we're on an incline, it's not at this, it's not opposite the weight anymore. It's not straight up. So we're going to have to look at some of our problems here, okay? So here's the picture. If we have an inclined plane, we're gonna rotate our X and Y axes so now X is parallel with the inclined plane and Y is perpendicular to the inclined plane. Okay? And so now we have our weight and we're gonna split our weight in the Y and the weight in the X. And then I just moved it up here because it's acting on, on the box or the crate or whatever. But it's, it would be right here also, same magnitude. And since these are um, they have two triangles with mutually parallel or perpendicular sides with similar triangles. You're going to break them into components and then calculate it and they are similar triangles. So this angle right here and this angle right here are going to be equal to each other. So we're going to do a lot of the same sine, cosine equations, but these are specific to the weight and normal force. Now, um, our f of y, we have the normal force in the y direction. We also have the weight in the y direction. And it's not moving off the surface, so then that is equal to ma, but acceleration is 0, so it equals 0. <coughs> so we could solve here for the normal force. Our x forces, in this case, there's only wx. So we're going to have this. And that is all equal to ma in the x direction. A lot of the same stuff that we did already, just in a different situation. Switch it. So if we do a problem here, a trunk weighing 562 newtons is resting on a plane inclined at 30 degrees from the horizontal. We're going to find the components of the weight parallel and perpendicular. So actually, let me get a new 30 degrees 562. This is our inclined plane right here. And this is 30 degrees. So what we're going to do is be able to break this into components. So this would be WX and WY because we flipped our axes. So we have X here and Y here. So once find the components of the weight parallel and perpendicular. So they want to know WX and WY. What is, what is this angle right here? 30 also, right? These two angles are equal to each other. To go to find WY, we have, that's the adjacent, right? So we'd use cosine. Cosine of 30 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. 
Oh, I actually have 30 in there, so let me put the 562. And then WX is sine. What? That's our weight, not a mass, right? It says it weighs 562 newtons. Right. If it gave us the mass, we'd have to multiply by 9.8. <laughs> so what is WY? So now, could we find, well, what's the next problem? Okay, so the 562 Newton trunk is on the frictionless plane inclined at 30 degrees from the horizontal. So the same picture, same information here. Find the acceleration of the trunk. What direction is that trunk going to accelerate? Down the inclined plane, right? And so we also, I'm going to move this WX down here, up here, I mean. And we're going to accelerate in this direction. How would we find the acceleration? We're going to have to sum up the forces in which direction? X direction. And what do we have? WX, right? Do we have any other forces in the X direction? No. So that's it. And what does that equal? MAX. And what's our mass? Yeah, that's weight. That's because we took the weight, 562, times sine theta to find Wx. What was the mass? Yep, divide by 9.8, and what is... 562 divided by 9.8 is? <coughs> so we have WX is 281. We have the mass of 67.35. And so now we can find the acceleration. Four point nine nine. Four point nine. There we go. Questions? The only thing that's different is we know the this box is gonna be moving down the incline unless you're pushing it up. But it's just naturally, it's going to move down the incline. So the force has to be opposite the movement. So force is going to be going up the incline. Because it's going to, friction slows down your motion, right? So if it was in the same direction, it'd be a force in the same direction of movement and make it speed up. So you went opposite. Friction what? Yeah, friction makes us slow. Um, let me oh, cancel. Um, let me change my point into because we're missing something here. We're missing normal force. Let me draw that in. Oh, that's a horrible line. Oh, I think it's, um, I think I'm out for next is, sorry. <laughs> A 
In this case, yes. Yes, but WI is also perpendicular. For this case, because our, no our net force is in the Y direction, the only ones we have, we have normal force up and we have weight down. We don't have anything else in the Y direction, do we? Mm -mm. And that's equal zero. <coughs> so then if normal force is equal to WI, yep. Well, it all depends, like, when we were pulling at an angle, they weren't equal to each other because we had that FY in there, too. Right. So In inclined plane, planes, we should always, that yeah, should always be it. Because mm -hmm. really, I, I don't know if you'll ever have another so Y force. So yeah, but you're, I guess if you put a pulling force at an angle, uh, usually, mm -hmm. so if we put like a pulling force like this, then you would, yeah, you would have to add these forces in with it. A lot of times when you're pushing an inclined plane, you're pushing more parallel, though, with the surface, or pulling parallel a lot of times. So these are, this is kind of what we just talked about right here, our Y forces. Normal doesn't change. But this time, instead of just the X direction, the weight in the X direction, we have WX minus WF equals MAX. Whoops. Oops. So it's all about just looking at the picture, what direction our force is going in. Can I switch it now? So if a coin is placed on the book of a cover and just begins to move when the cover makes an angle of 38 degrees horizontal. So up until that point, it's not moving, so we're using static coefficient of friction. Let's, um, well, let me know. Uh, we don't know. Let me change to black. Let me draw the picture. Thirty-eight degrees, right? And we have this coin here. We don't know anything else, right? We do know weight is equal to mg. We know wy is equal to the cosine, right? Cosine of thirty-eight times the weight. which weight is mg. We know wx is the sine of 38 times the weight, which is mg. And we want to know the coefficient of static friction. So we want to know the coefficient. So what's our force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. And we know the normal force is this direction right here. So the normal force was equal to WY, which is equal to, I'm going to put the MG at the front, MG times the cosine of 38, right? Weight. You can put weight. We're going to need it as MG. You'll see. Um, OK, so we know normal force. Are we accelerating? Because we aren't moving, right? The coin isn't moving. So our net force is in the x direction. We have that's just when it starts to move. So at 38, that's where we're still using static friction. Minus f of f 
this time it's equal to zero because we're not moving, so acceleration is zero. So Wx is equal to F of F. So the force of friction is equal to mg sine of mg, <coughs> correct? So now if we plug all that in here, we'd have mg sine of 38 equals mu mu times mg cosine of 38. What can we do? Well, mg's can cancel out, right? So then if we have the sine of 38 over the cosine of 38, is this the coefficient? And that's all you have to do. So we don't need the weight on that one. I guess for this one we could have left W in there because you could have crossed out W.